Most people in life are looking for how do I make a life worth living and a retirement worth having. The only way to do that is to truly focus on your life, to really ask yourself whether you are living a life of balance, a life of joy, a life of happiness, a life of service, a life of community projects, a life of philanthropy. You see, when we look at life balance, we have to look at the realities of our life, that life balance comes about from disciplined planning and time management. It also comes about from paying attention to our finances and our loved ones and making sure we have enough to provide for them in life. The stupidity of people is thinking they have rights to you or me that they don't have. The illness of matronly women who are overweight are they often want to answer someone's questions that aren't even being addressed to them at all. In life, we have moments of time to recognize that we might have a fast-working, processing brain, but other people may process at a different speed. We also have people who can anticipate conversations because they are so accustomed to listening. They're so used to social etiquette, social nuance, and socially appropriate behavior that they can generally expect where a conversation will go. But the true art of listening, according to the very late and great Steve Shapiro, is that you listen without reacting. Sometimes when you're a channel for God, it is very difficult to listen to what he has to say. Rebuke of the Lord is not something that is welcome today. The rebuke of God is often something not heard by any Christian or Catholic today. The sins of America are that, sins handled by American citizens who claim to be of faith, who claim to have a spirituality, who claim to be about religion, who claim to be a lover of Jesus, as several people who have come up to me and tried to play with me have played. Practically, I don't believe that. What I believe is they are abusers of the First Amendment. You see, the First Amendment in America says, I have the right and you have the right to pursue the faith of your choice. That I have the right and you have the choice and the right to pursue your own religious bent. But here's the problem for most people, that they do not spend any time at all studying religion. They simply try to imply that they know religion, they try to insist that they know Christ, and they try to act like they're doing something because Jesus has moved them to do this. I don't buy it. If Jesus has moved you to do something, then you can articulate in your own way, your own fashion, your own ability, why it is that you are thinking that you have the need or the right to help someone, like me or like anyone else who's in poverty. Every day I see people walk up to a person in poverty and hand them something, some sort of food they bought for themselves and just decided, oh, I'm in the mood, I'm going to give this to you. What I ask you is, does that person like that food? Does that person have an allergy to that food? Does that person even need that food? And most of you don't even stop to think about the permissions that you've just overrun by handing someone something that you purchased really for you. Or the other side of that coin is that you've decided to go into a shop without ever talking to that total stranger, without ever asking them what can you do for them, what do they need, and you purchase something for them that you think that they'll probably want, and then you don't discover because they won't tell you that they really don't want it, that they'll probably sell it, that they'll probably give it away, or as most of them often do on the panhandler's way, they throw it away. You see, people who are living in scarcity are usually in need of, well, financiality. And I'm not being really rhymy today because I don't feel like I have the timing today. It's because I don't give a shit today. When people attack a life, usually we have the right to defend ourselves. But when people stand 10 feet away from them pretending to be things or not and trying to solicit them for cigarettes, for, for lighters and other things, you just look at them and go, please, it costs you a dollar or two to buy that and you are not in the significant struggle like me. What I'm saying is that everybody's got a story. Everybody's got an opportunity for God's glory. But if you're not paying attention to your life and you're stealing from someone else's work, you're stealing from someone else's life, you're interfering with their purchases, you're making fun of them, you're doing all these things that are immoral and illegal, what do you think Jesus Christ that you profess to know is thinking of your life? And why the hell does he have to give you any help in this world or in this realm? with the Holy Ghost that is promised it in the Bible, in the Quran, and in other works of the Lord. 
You see, in our lives, we have the ability to listen, but sometimes we don't listen. What we do is we analyze, and we talk to humans, and they give us advice, and the advice they give us is the wrong advice to play with. It's the wrong advice to lay with, it's the wrong advice to stay with, and it's the wrong advice completely. Because they're human. They do not know the Lord's plans for your life. But God does lead people on journeys through the ups and downs and the struggles of life. But usually selfish behavior, arrogant behavior, is what destroys relationships in life. 